we are ready to start another drawing lesson and we're going to continue the use of a triad of colors to develop the background and then we're going to jump into negative painting and negative painting is really really important it's a skill that is almost essential so if you're going to be a watercolor artist you need to paint around shapes this this lesson is going to help you develop those negative painting skills that are so essential and you can see here this is a little way that you could start out I actually have a little tip down below that you can check out and you start with just go outside and pick a little branch with four five six leaves on it draw around it then take the same branch and move it and draw around it again and then color it in and then place it a third time draw around it and paint it again and it, it's a very simple but very just such an easy way to do a little warm-up to get the idea of negative painting. So you'll find that in the tips. When I started doing negative painting, which it didn't happen for me right away, I, I really didn't like negative painting. So I figured out all kinds of lessons that are strictly positive. But when I finally made the decision that I was going to be a negative painter, I actually got my pencil out and you can see here how much planning I did and shadowing and starting to develop the many layers and I really enjoyed this it was a, it was a good also a good little prep for learning how to do negative painting and there's the painting and here you can see all the layers you've got your underpainting and then you've got this this tone and then the darker tone so this was done in about three layers and each time you add another layer, you have to come in and draw some more. So we'll do it step by step. It won't be that hard. You're going to enjoy it. And I'm going to use the subject of morning glories. Because years ago, for year after year, this is what greeted me every morning. I absolutely loved it. Um, in the morning, these are out. And each day, a new one comes out. And they were, they were so beautiful. They were climbing up the side of my gallery. So it is one of my favorite subjects. And here you can see one. Now, the, the reason I love this subject so much, and I've got some more pictures here that I'll be working from, I really enjoy the heart-shaped leaf. And the best part are, is this intertwining. They just wrap around each other. That's how they support themselves on the trellis. So the incredible wrapping look at this this that's what it that's what they do and every day a new bud which has this twisting and then the see how fuzzy they are and lighter in color so it is a perfect subject it goes from the dark to the mid-tone to the light and here's another example of the intertwining this is and the other thing I like is see the color you can get into the pink and the purples or just the blues and the ultramarine blue is the perfect blue to use and I just threw this in because I wanted you to see that first of all there's that support that goes out and then all these leaves start popping out of that and then the tendrils come out and intertwine with that so and then we're going to add a lot of color in the background you can see here with the sunshine is, is coming out behind these beautiful morning glories. Now here's an example of one of my summer lessons and we did roses and morning glories and a lot of different subjects. This one actually has some collage papers in it too. I'm going to move in real close so you can see. But you can see some of the Ogura and some of the Anru papers. They're little fibered papers, beautiful oriental papers. We have some future lessons coming up where we're going to be working with those two papers. So this is an example of what we're going to be doing. We're going to start with an underpainting using a triad of colors, primaries. And I want to use a triad that is not staining. And you have your list that tells you all of the colors I use and the colors that are staining and non-staining. Now most of the colors I use are non-staining. 
So really, it's, it's easier to say the colors not to use. So I'm not going to be using alizarin or thalo green or Windsor yellow or Windsor orange. But every other color on my palette is non-staining. And actually, for this particular lesson, I'm going to be using areolan yellow and permanent rose. Um, maybe I'll use permanent rose this time. Permanent rose, beautiful, and cobalt blue. So I'm going to use that, that triad in my background. And that's going to be the underpainting, the first layer. So you can see those colors in the background. And you can see some of those colors in some of the foliage, too, because those colors are underneath. Here's another one. And you can see on this one, I brought more of the warm colors in the background, which is kind of nice. To, and I tried to get dark enough to be a nice contrast to this white flower. And again, many, many layers and lots of collage. Now these are some of the many pictures that I took from my beautiful morning glories outside. And so I picked some out that I like the best. And using my HB pencil, I'm going to start on Arches 140 pound cold press paper. And I always check to be sure I'm on the front of the paper. There's a lot more sizing on the front. So I can tell the back because there's a lot of bumps and they tend to go like a concave shape. So I know for sure this is the front. Well, we're ready to start drawing now. And you can see I've got my paintings up behind me. Oh, we'll see how it goes. And in these early lessons, I wanted to spend the time drawing so you could just, this is something I've never had a chance to do before. I'm really excited about it. So one of the first things I want to do is just mention again this idea that when you're designing, where are you going to put your focal area? Always think of thirds. It's just a simple old tic-tac-toe. So what I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to put in some flowers that are overlapping each other, and then I'm going to have another flower come out here, and I'm probably going to have that flower that I really like. Oh yeah, like this one right here. I'll probably have that come, and I like to have them facing out too. I might find another one that's facing out this way rather than into the painting, although then I might just do that one too, into the painting. And then an assortment of leaves and so on. But the important thing is to get these in these positions, not in the middle. So I'm going to start with this. This is one of my favorite all-time photos of Morning Glories. And they really are an interesting flower to draw. Now this is just an HB pencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the outside shape and some of those little interesting ups and downs. And I usually paint the flower in two sections. And so what happens is this goes up and then it comes down and right about here I like to draw in and then this one go over here and this one over here so I like to draw this so you have the foreground petal the deep throat here and then the back petal and see then this has this funnel shape at the bottom that comes down and attaches to a nice stem and then oh, there's buds everywhere. Love these buds. So the buds are going to then come out and they twist and twist and twist and twist. It's really cool. So we'll just try to show some of that twisting motion. And I might even right off the bat start thinking about some kind of a leaf shape that again is interlocking with this. But first, well, no, that wasn't a real good idea because I was going to interlock another flower there. See? I get carried away. But that's what this eraser is for. I know some people prefer to do their drawing very controlled on a uh, tracing paper or parchment paper of some sort. I just like to do it right on the paper. That's what erasers are for, and I'm happy with that. 
Okay, so now I'm going to come up here and there's another one of these trumpet shapes, I call them, coming out. Coming out here. And this is really pretty. I love the way. I love seeing them from the side like this. And this, this is nice. It's going to go right off the page, come down. And this part's going to come up, and then part of the flower goes behind it, and behind here, and comes back. So see, we've already got, and I don't draw in all this information. That, I'm just going to wing it. But I do, when a petal turns like this, then I do show that. So I'm going to have this come in with a turned petal that runs along here and goes back. So the petal behind, the petal in the middle, and the petal that's rolling over the top. There are no rolling petals on this one. Now I do want to interlock this. Oh, here's a good one. So I hardly ever work from one. I just, just go and combine them. So this one here, first of all, we'll go for the outside shape. kind of straight across here and it has this cute little bump it comes around and again I'm going to do this one so I've got to find this shape coming up going down into the throat and then it comes across here and goes up again to here so we've got the front and the back and then on this one I have to come in and show them the base coming in and look at all the fun stuff happening already wow so now we can think about adding some leaves and think about adding things that are twisting and turning oh my favorite thing and even as this goes down we'll probably twist something up and interlock it with this In fact, it would be fun right now to pull, we'll come up from down here, go behind here, and come up here, and I'm looking at this little deal, see we've got a nice start. And I love this. There's another one twisting. We'll put it behind. It's got some little baby leaves on it. Beautiful. Oh, this is way too much fun. So we don't have to put a lot into this. We just need our basic start. So now I found another one here I like. Yeah. I think what I'll do is going to add another another one of these down here. Oh, I like this one. This is nice right here. So I'm going to have one lower in the painting. I try not to get them all lined up. See, it would have been real easy to stick one right here exactly across from this. That's a bad idea. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of, this one is coming out this way. Let's turn the angle. We'll have a stem coming here. And we'll turn the angle just a little bit different. And this is the trumpet coming up. The throat, I should say. Now this one, this one has a little different fore, foreground. See, it's kind of cool. So I'm going to come across here. Oh, I see what's happening. That that petal's coming. The stem is breaking into that flower. Ooh. I don't know if I'll do that. But I've, I'm going to come out here, make my way around. And in this case, we have a very narrow. See, this is coming down here. It's very narrow. Makes its way across. 
and then goes up. So that's going to work just fine as we're coming out with all those fun shapes. And I now I've got three. I could stop right now and just fill up this with lots of buds and stems. I think I might even think about that. So I'm going to start with a few of these shapes coming up. Finding their way over. And see what I'm going to be looking for now are buds. Oh, here's a lovely one right here. Look at this. See, there's one just starting to open. So it's got that fun little fattened top. And the throat comes down. Usually there's some petals here. And as it comes down, you can see we've got another petal coming out here. And then if we want to, we can even have another, have this break into another. Look at that. Oh, we're going to do that. So this is going to come up. And now this time we need a full bud. Beautiful bud. Hmm. Oh, this is going to do. Look at this. There, right there. Love it. And again, don't forget that these twist and twist and twist. So now we have two together, but see this, I love this. I might just decide to build that in. Because as I look at this, I'm starting to get pretty intricate here. You don't want to do too much on this first level. You just want to do the underpainting now and set the stage for the sun coming out and the direction of your sunlight, that kind of thing. And then you have to let it dry and then draw some more. So we're going to stop right now and get started. Stop with the drawing right now and get started with the color. We're ready to go. First thing I do is get my paint wet. I love my paints full and dry. So I always have to get them started with just a little gentle mist. And now I'm going to start by wetting the back. No tape. Just wet the back, wet the front, and that keeps it nice and flat. It sticks to the board. It's really nice. You can pick it up if you want to. Tip and turn. Here we go now. You can see how nice my HB pencil is. It's hardly smearing. I'm getting a little bit, but I don't see. I like that. It's not a problem for me. Now I'm only going to use colors that don't move in water and I'm only going to use colors that are non-staining. So if I have an area that it runs into and I don't like it, I can remove it. I'm going to use a one inch flat to put the colors down. And I'm going to start with my yellow. So I'm going to start with my areola in yellow. This is a beautiful color and it hardly moves at all in as wet as this paper is. 
it hardly moves at all. So see, I can come in and tuck this right up to this, and it hardly does anything. Love this. And it's moving a little, but that's okay, because I'm going to lift it away. So the first thing I want to do is think about my path of yellow. So I'm going to come through over here, go off, and if a little bit of this bleeds in, I don't mind anyway. And then I'm going to come down, I went off here, so I think I'll come down over here. Nice. Now I'm going to use my permanent rose, always activated on your palette. Never go from here to here. You have no idea how much paint is on there. So we're going to just go a little bit into the yellow, which should give us a kind of an orange color. And a little bit behind all these. Now this is all negative painting. I'm going between, all, oops, I'm painting in the shape here. Didn't mean to do that. We'll lift that out. But I'm going to paint in between all these shapes. And again, this is a color that doesn't move much in water. And it's hard to even get it to blend. See, I'm not really getting an orange. If I wanted an orange, I'd have to work really hard. But it did bleed into this, I'll just lift it away. So I'm going to continue now with my permanent rose. Go to the other side. So I paint over the other color when I want to. And I like to have a path. I think I'm going to go up here a little bit. Spatter it a bit. But I have to always wet my brush, shake it out, take the extra moisture off. And I cannot get this, because this color doesn't move much in water, it's really hard to get a blended look. So I don't have any choice but to blend it. <laughs> so now I'm starting to get my path of red. It goes off here, kind of goes off over here. Now I'm going to come down. Mm -hmm. Where am I going to come down? Maybe over here. Now when I come in with the cobalt blue, this is when the fun begins. When I go over yellow, I'm going to get some greens. Although cobalt is so, just doesn't like to be anything but blue. Hmm. I think I'll change my mind and do manganese. Because I, I really want to get some greens in this first layer. So I'm also going to pull in some more yellow here. In fact, we want a lot of this color to bleed into these, especially these leaves. So now I'm going to switch to manganese. This is another color. It's got yellow in it. So it will blend a little better, and it doesn't move in water at all. See how it likes to be green? Oh, I love this. And then where it goes over my reds, I'll get some lovely grays. So we're going to pull some of this nice color through here, get some grays, clean my brush, make sure we get some nice greens. See, it's okay to go over those, especially the leaves, because this is their first color. Now, I always enjoy doing just a little spatter. Breaks it up so nice. Now we're getting close to done with our little underpainting. 
And again, I've got, I want to lose some of these areas. I want it to be very blended. I want this just to be a plain old background. Now if it bleeds into my flower, I pretty much clean that up. So we're going to lift out some of these lights. I didn't, you can see there's very little bleeding. And that's because the colors themselves just don't move in water. It's a unique, it's a very unique idea. I don't think many people think about that when they're doing a, a underpainting. About the colors that move and the colors that don't move. But I make it a constant concern. Okay, now I wanted to go over those leaves, especially to get my first layer. And I'm going to add just a little bit of warmth to them with a little bit of spatter. But I'm going to keep my flowers clean. And another thing I really enjoy is a little bit of color sanding. Ooh, this is fun. So using, see I've got this, this one is a really nice one for just some simple little shapes. I might just do a little bit of this. And I like to use the same colors that I'm in. I don't add new colors. So if I just color sand a little yellow over this, and a little bit of light blue, see it's a very light blue, I could just have a little hint that there's some foliage going on in the background. Oh, isn't that fun? And I'm just going to spray into that to make sure that it's going to stay there and bond with the paper. The spray is very important. So now I think I might do another little same idea. Looks like we're in the same colors again. So again I'm going to do some yellow. Yellow on yellow. Let's see if I have... Here's a little bit darker yellow tone. and the same blue. Oh yeah, that's really nice. And now over here, I'll do another one. And we're in a red area, so I'll just do a little color similar to it. This is a little orange. So we've got just a little hint now, and you can see how when you spray the water it intensifies. So look how much darker it gets when we do that. And again, I'm just going to take my one inch flat, wet it, wipe it dry so it becomes a thirsty brush, and I'm just going to lift away any of these colors that went into my flower. See, I don't like to mask these things. They look too hard-edged to me. So I prefer just taking a minute and cleaning them up afterwards. So I'm going to make sure that all of my main flowers are pretty clean. And now we have some lovely things happening in our underpainting. And the last thing I'm going to do is add just a little bit of salt. The salt gives that nice little sparkle. Now, I don't just throw the salt anywhere. I usually put it in my lightest areas. So see, this is a lovely light area right here. I'll put a little salt in there. This is a lovely light area over here. And maybe going up here. So now we're just going to let this rest, and when I come back, we're going to draw in some more leaves and do another layer. So now our underpainting is dry, and this is where we start to try to conceive of the final piece. 
So these are going to be the first layer. And the flowers, of course, we're going to paint relatively dark because I'm thinking of this, this color, this, this uh, a little bit of pink, but it's going to have a lot of blue. And so it would be nice to have this one dark against the light background. And then it would be nice to have these um, just a little bit lighter against a dark background. So I'm trying to think of some of these transpositions that are going to happen. Right now I have two things ending at the same distance, three things actually. That's not good. So one of the first things I'm going to do is come in here with something that we can draw that will come down here and we can make it into where'd you go? Right here. We're gonna make this into some maybe another bud. Buds are fabulous. So I'll just have a bud coming out here. Oh, these two buds just got acquainted here. <laughs> two buds. <laughs> and then I, I'm going to do another leaf shape. Probably hmm, coming down this way. And it'll be a leaf going behind this. So at this point, just about everything's interlocking with everything else. You can see that leaf. That's a good idea, having it interlock. But now it wouldn't hurt to have another leaf that's going to just take our eye right off the page here. So now we've got a lot of things going all on the same level here. That's not good. So one of the first things we want to do is just have a leaf of some sort that is going to go lower. And we could even have something intertwine with this and go right off the page. That's why I love this particular lesson. You can just keep adding and adding. So before I get too carried away with this drawing, I'm going to start now with the next value. And the next value is going to be a mid-tone. So using quinacridone gold, my favorite color, and my favorite color is Oh, Lord. Here we go. Antwerp blue and Quinn gold. Oh, my. This is a beautiful, beautiful olivey green. And it's going to look beautiful with those pinks and purples. A little more of the olive, because remember, we're making a mid tone. So we don't want this too dark. And we also want a lot of water. So let's see how this is going to work. So the first thing we're gonna do is just start in here and start painting around everything. This is negative painting. Now you'll notice we just did a cool thing. We actually taped this down. And not that I'm encouraging you to tape it down, but when we're filming, if I don't tape this down, it's bouncing all the time. So this is gonna give us less mounts. So now we're going to come in, paint around some of these shapes. In fact, most of them. And see how the red, you can still see the red. This is what I love about the style of painting I'm teaching, this layered style. Every time you do another layer, it, it reacts to the layer that's underneath. Oh, I love it. So now we're painting around everything, negative painting, and at some point we're going to come out to the edge here and we have to decide how far do we want to go with this. I think what I'm going to do is touch it off in here. And just sort of taper it off here. So now I'm going to wet my brush, clean it out, shake it, take the extra moisture off here, 
And coming in from above, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to lose that edge into the background. Just a nice lost edge. Same over here. I'm going to repaint that a bit. I need to go beyond that tip. Wet it, shake it, touch it. Come in like this and lose that edge. Having trouble losing that edge. Whenever I have trouble losing an edge, I do, I do this little trick. I put salt. <laughs> and that, that's amazing. It does a great job. Okay, so we're going to keep going here now. We're going to come around and paint all these lovely little shapes. It's actually kind of fun. I should have painted this up to the edge of this. You never stop in the middle. But see, I like to do examples of the wrong thing, too. There we go. They'll never know. We've got more layers to go anyway. This is just the first. So as we come around, same color on each side. Should all look alike. Now some people mask all this. I really, I don't. I like it. I like the freedom here. Again, wet it, shake it, lose it. If you don't, if it doesn't do a good job getting a lost edge, put a little salt on it. See how nice the salt is? We like the salt. So now I'm going to continue. Now as you're doing this, make sure that whatever color here comes out over here. We've talked about that before. We call it bookending. Because we're going to be doing several more layers, it's not that critical. But it would be good if you could kind of keep it similar. Now we're getting to the point where we want to think about how far do we want to go with this. So I think I'll go over here. I'll take it right off the edge. Isn't that nice to see some of those warm colors in the leaves? That's important. Yeah, we're almost there. Now on this side, I'm coming into a nice color sanded area, and you'll see how I can paint right on top of that color sanding. It's amazing. Again, I'm going to wet my brush out, shake it out really good, take out the extra moisture, and I'm going to come in from above and just lose this right into that color sanding. And again, my lost edges aren't, I'm not happy with them, so I just throw salt in them. That's the best way to deal with that. Now we're going to come in here. We're almost done with this layer. Man, this goes fast. So I'm just going to come around. Here a bit. Now I don't want it to just be half and half. Hmm. What I need to do is to maybe pull this up just a little bit higher.
pull it a little bit in here. And now I'm going to lose it. Wet it, shake it, touch it, come in, lose this edge. We don't want to leave any hard edges at this point. We'll, have, we'll be doing some hard edges later, but right now everything should be soft. And losing these edges is, is not easy. You're going to experience some, I'm having problems with it right now. I'm going to come back and do this again. Even here. When you're painting on dry paper, it's hard to lose an edge. But don't forget that little salt trick. <laughs> I use it all the time. You always wondered why I had so many so much salt in my paintings, you know why. Wet it, shake it, touch it, come in, lose that edge the best you can. Here I'm in a nice color sanded area too. I like that when it bleeds into a nice textured area. So now what we're going to do, we're going to put a little salt in all of these lost edges. And we're going to go dry this. So I'll be back shortly. Now we're ready to start the next layer. So that means we've got to have our HB pencil out again and draw in some more leaves. Now I was just looking at this one. This is two layers. See there's this layer, the first layer, this layer, and then the real dark. And in this case the real dark is negative, and then sometimes I come out with that real dark as a positive. We'll see what we can do about that. First of all, one step at a time. We're just going to come in and start adding, like, I want to add a leaf. And I just love leaves that are kind of on their side like that. I think it's time to put in kind of a big one. So we're going to have this leaf that's going to come through here and here. And maybe the side of that is, is just turned in. So see, this is the inside and the outside of that leaf. Ooh, that's fun. And then you can see I'm going to draw more of these little tangled so I got one in there. Let's draw another one coming across here. Let's try to find another leaf shape. There's a nice one. So again, I don't want to make them too small. Got a nice kind of a big shaped leaf that's running its way through here and twisting down. And we could add another one that just happens to be coming around here. Oh, that's got some nice... I like that. And see, that one's going to have two parts to it, too. And look at the nice combination. It's got a little light and dark. And let's see. Sometimes I have to redraw things if I get a little confused. I think we're going to be fine. And I really love it when they start twisting and turning. Although we've done a fair share of that. Maybe one more that would twist up here. Just have little baby leaves. Some more little baby leaves. But we have to remember when it comes through here. See, that one can get just lost. And now I need to add something down here. Sometimes it's hard when you've got too many, too many references. I get confused. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. If I 
can't find a leaf in here, I'm in trouble. So again, I'm going to come up from below here and come out here. So that was easy. Now, maybe some little, just something little. There could be little shapes coming off of this. I could add a little shape off of this. And I could add one more little stem coming down and back up. <laughs> Good. Now we are ready for the next layer. Now I left a little bit of my previous layer here. I wanted to see the previous layer and as I develop this layer I'm going to use the same glue which happens to be my Antwerp glue. We'll get that in here. And then this time I'm going to use quinacridone burnt orange. And throughout this e-course, you're going to hear me refer to this mixture quite a bit. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. It's transparent. Both the colors are liftable. So if you do something and you don't like it, you can come in and take it away. And non-staining colors are, are really important. I worked hard to get a, all of my colors to be either non-staining or and transparent that was a that was a tough deal but I did it I was really happy I love my colors okay now you can see just by looking at these two colors they're definitely this is definitely darker so let's see how we like it on the paper Ooh, yeah that's nice and see this is a very transparent mixture so if I go over some warm colors, you'll actually see the warmth coming in. And I, I find that about a number eight round brush is your best choice. I often see people struggling with a flat brush, and I think they're harder. I like having this tip. I can get in the tiniest little crevices. And see, the, the more of these this drawing we do, the more overlapping we're going to get. I probably did too much drawing on the underpainting. But we'll just see how it turns out. Now you're seeing the first leaf up here. Isn't that fun? And we're actually just painting over the same thing again right here. That's why it's good to do lots of new ones. I might just draw some more in. Oh, now we're getting to some new ones here. And keep that good and dark. If you notice it's getting light, go back and check your mixture. They tend to separate. Now we got a new one here, like that. And we're pretty close to the edge. I could try losing that edge. Yeah, it's going to work. Remember, though, every time I lose an edge, I put a little salt in it. <laughs> Okay, so now we're starting to see some of these new shapes popping out. You can see now some of the salt from our previous endings. Wet it, shake it, touch it, lose it. Well, in this case, I'm going to go out a little further. Now we're going to lose it. And up here, I'm going to pop this out just a bit. That might 
chunky enough. Wet it, shake it, get that moisture out. And don't wait too long to lose this. The longer you wait, the harder it is. Now we're going to wet it, shake it, touch it. Come in and lose that edge. <laughs> and salt. Yes. You know what? I think I'm going to draw some more because this is too much fun. Every time we've got one of these little stems or little leaves. Let's see. We could have one more. Seems like a lot, but why not? Be sure to mix enough of this color to do the whole thing. I mean, we could, it's only a two color mix, so it wouldn't be too difficult to do it again. But you don't want to keep doing a new mix because it's not going to look the same. see something I forgot here to paint the first time. How about that? That's fun. The color won't look exactly the same, but it'll be close enough. Oh good, now we have several layers going on here. This is when it gets fun. distinct layers. The first layer, which is just the underpainting. The second layer were the additional leaves that I just drew in. Now what I want to do is I want to take these same colors and pull them out into these open areas. So you can see here I've, I've got my quinacridone burnt orange and my Antwerp blue. And these two colors are going to give me a beautiful dark green. So I'm just going to, even though this is kind of a lighter green, we can do whatever we want here. So I want to have these come out and be much darker as a contrast to the light background. So I'll add a little of this green to it. I might even add a little bit of yellow green to it. But it's nice to see now this variety. And over here too, we're going to go, to go into this darker color and start pulling out some of these lovely intertwining things so that they're actually darker than this. If I paint directly on the dark, but as they're coming out here, they can be anything lighter. So again, I'm going to take my pencil. <laughs> if I can find it, here it is. And I'm going to draw some more stuff. This is going to be the, the fun part. So I think it's time to have another dark shape come up here. I love this. this that is just beautiful. That little bud almost ready to open. It's a little darker here. And it's got a little friend 
next to it. So let's put that in too. Turn it to a little, a little bit that we. I don't like to do parallel lines if I can avoid it. And that that could have a little leaf shape sticking off of it. So that turned out nice. I could, I could also have something intertwining, sometimes over, sometimes under, over, under, over. <laughs> so we can just have a little fun now with these intertwining shapes. And even down here I can do it. I can have something that just might pop up here. And then come in here. And if this is dark enough, see it's going to be darker than what's here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I love it. So now we've got these guys. And see we can even just paint them freehand. You don't have to draw them first. And we can even paint these the shape of leaves. So now what we're doing are some positive shapes. We just kind of fit them in between here. Let's make a nice big one. Let's make it so big it really fills this up. And see, even these guys are going to be quite dark. We've got some of this mixture left over. It's quite dark, so let's just make this one a little greener. And this whole stem here is going to be painted. can take some yellow if I want to and yellow up some of these stems. Paint some of these negative stems with just almost straight yellow. That looks nice. Now I'm kind of looking forward to putting in some color. So I'm actually going to paint this little guy here into some, with some pinks. And I'm going to wet this to a nice soft transition. Oh yeah. We'll lose those. And now the top of this is a purple. So I'm going to go into my French Ultramarine Blue. And that's going to give me a nice purpley tone. And it's going to be nice and dark against this background, the light background. So that's good. And I see a little dark down here too, so I'll just put that down here, pull it up. Put some nice bright yellow in this and then I'll just come in with this color. Finish that up. Yeah, it's nice to see that yellow. <laughs> I got my little dirty finger there. I think I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to take some nice bright yellow and put it in and then I'm going to finish this with that mid-tone color mixed in with it. Now I'm assuming that this bud here is going to be about the same color. So let's start again. What's some of that nice pink right in here? We'll put some of that nice pink towards the bottom. 
Then we'll come in with the French ultramarine blue. Let those guys get acquainted. And then I'm just going to lose this into a light area and into a light area. I need a bigger brush. Now one of the things I like to do is to pull that red right into the stem. It's really important. So every now and then just do it. Just pull that red down into your stems because you're going to see a lot of that when you look at the stems. There's actually a lot of warmth in those stems. So it's really important to do that. I think I'm going to go even a little bit darker on this. finish this. Well, I'm ready to go today. You can see since I've been here I refurbished my palette. I had to fill quite a few holes. It's pretty exciting. And I was evaluating what I should do next on this painting. One of the things I like to do is to go ahead and finish all the negative painting. So see this third layer of the very dark shapes that are popping out the whites and they're also forming some shapes of uh, leaf-like shapes throughout. That's what I usually like to do next. But uh, because this flower is on the dark side, and you can see here, most of them are in the blue range. And so if I do a dark blue and put it next to a dark green, those equal values are going to melt. So it's really important that I think about painting the flowers next. And you can see here where it's light in the background. I'm probably going to make this dark against the light, and then I'm going to make this edge lighter against the dark. So I think I'll wait and do the final dark darks after I paint the flowers. Not only that, I'm excited. I want to paint these flowers. Now the flowers themselves, as I just showed you, come in a plain color blue. And this one is uh, more of a manganese blue, but they also come in a very French ultramarine color. They also come in a pure pink. And they also come in pink and blue, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a combination of the two. But instead of having the red going into the deep throat, I'm going to have the red basically mix out here to give us more of a purple. And so it's going to look more like this with the white throat with that hint of pink. And the reason I'm doing this is because this picture is a memory picture. And I walk by these every day and I still, still love them. So that's what we're going to do. Now to start the flower, I'm going to paint it in two parts. Remember when I drew it, I mentioned that this is going to be one and this is going to be another. I'm going to move in really close here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to wet it with some clean water. And I'm thinking about the movement of this paint. Now the colors I've chosen don't move well in water, so I have to get it really good and wet. And I'm just going to do the back part. So now I wet it, and I wet it a second time, making sure I got all these areas. Now I'm going to start with my quinacridone coral. This color barely moves, but I want it, I just want it. It's a, to me, it's a, such a pretty color. So you can see I'm going to start with just a little bit of the pink. And then right over the top of this, I'm going to take 
French Ultramarine Blue. Now here's another color, doesn't move very much in water. And remember I said I want it to be dark up here against the light. So I'm going to carry this very dark, as dark as I can get it, right out here. And there's usually a little white line there, so I'm kind of avoiding that peak. And so, and I'm thinking about the movement, it comes around like this. And remembering the throat is white, so I'm leaving that white. And see, now we're getting into a dark area. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this blue. It'll still read as a blue flower. But when I come in with that really dark, dark color there, it'll look nice. Let's go back again because this is so wet. I'm going to come back another time and add even stronger dark along the edge here. Now comes the fun part. Okay, so I'm going to take my one inch flat brush and I'm going to take it here, shake it out, and actually what I have to do is wipe it dry. This is a lifting brush. This is the thirsty brush. And see how I'm lifting it out to that corner. Oh man, this is fun. I'm going to do it here. And you see this white, and it goes from the white here. Whatever you do, don't lift it from here down into the white because that, that will push the color into the white. And because this just keeps rolling back in, you have to do it more than once. So here I come again. Eventually it will stop. And meanwhile, it's kind of fun doing it over and over. I don't mind it. And there's just a special glowing look that you get by working like this wet into wet. And see, it really does, it, that's the glow you get, that kind of feel. I like it. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and wet this area. Start here, come around, and out to the edge. Make sure it's good and wet. Remember I said these colors don't move in water. So now this time we're going to have this outer edge much lighter and go much darker here. And I'm just going to dry this a little bit just because I should have probably waited for that to dry. But I'm going to go ahead and take a chance. Okay, so now we're coming in. I always start with the same color. So I started with the pink. So I'm going to start with the pink again. So I'm just going to come here. I'm thinking about the movement. It goes up and down. I'm going to put a little bit of additional pink close to the edge. And then I'm going to come in with the French Ultramarine Blue. Again, I'm going to start it on top of the pink and let little hints of it come out. I want this to come out just a little bit further. See what I mean about not moving? There are colors that this would just be flying, but not these two. They just don't like to move in water. So I'm going to build up the dark a little bit more here. Now I'm going to clean my brush and wipe it almost dry. This is called the thirsty brush. And now I'm going to lift out those little, those lovely little whites. Every time you have a point, that's where the whites are. I think I might even lift away a little bit more of this color. Yeah. Check to be sure my edges are soft. There we go. I 
can see where I need just a little bit more dark right in here. Oh, this is fun. It's like remembering an old friend. <laughs> okay, now the um, this deep throat is very white, but very often you'll see just a little bit of color in there. Just a little bit. Um, see over in here? There's just a little hint, a little glow of yellow. So I'm going to take some of my yellow. This is a Rolian. And I'm just going to add a little hint of that right here. Soften the edge. Yeah. And I might just go around and do that to all all of these because I want that little hint of the yellow and this one up here too we'll just give it a little hint of the yellow that's good so I'm just gonna go ahead and paint these and We'll speed up the camera. this over so I just put in that one color but now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure it's dark here against this light and we're going to make sure it's dark here against this light and then here we go again we're going to try really hard to go a little lighter over here that does get to be a challenge so I just add more water to the French ultramarine and just go a lot softer. See now right now these two values are getting similar but I'm going to go much darker that's why I like to paint this at this time. Aha! even light lift a little bit of that color to show that it's a little bit lighter there by now this is dry enough I can wet this little segment. So it's, it's really a good idea to wait for it to dry in between. You can always soften that edge. And I always start with the same color, so I'm going to start with just a little pink. And go a little darker here against the light throated area. Just a little bit darker. Now the French ultramarine. Now we'll just soften this a little bit.
when you come back to paint this half, and this half is getting dry, keep in mind they don't even look like they belong to the same flower. But colors change so much during the drying. So you just have to trust that it's going to look like the same color. So I just keep coming in with this thirsty brush, cleaning this up, cleaning this up, wipe it really dry, come in and lift out that nice light, and then any of these edges that you, you want to lighten them a little, go ahead and just push them back. But keep thinking about the movement. Always think about the movement. Because I really love this light against the dark, dark against the light. That one does look quite a bit bluer. I might come in with just a little more blue here. Now the big reason I put these colors on separately, a lot of people paint a purple flower and imagine this, they take the pink and the blue and make a purple and paint the whole thing purple. Never do that. Always start with the pink, add the blue, mix it on your paper. That way you get these lovely, lovely glows. See, you will never get this if you mix a straight purple where you get this glow of the pink, the glow of the blue, the glow of the blended color. I really like that. That's, to me, that's what I'm looking for. We have one more to paint. Now, whenever, whenever I'm showing several petals, I always start with the back petal. So I'm not even going to bother to wet this little rascal. It's going to be dark. So I'm just going to paint this dark. It's my French ultramarine blue. Same over here. I'm just going to paint dark. And I'm just going to add a little hint of the pink. There we go. A little hint of the pink. Now when that dries, we'll, we'll come up here and paint the, the body of that. So meanwhile, we're going to come over here and paint this little bud that hasn't opened. And they frequently have this twisting look to them. And you can see there's a glow of pink and a glow of blue. And it's still kind of a light yellowy green at the base. So we'll just do it all. We're going to start by wetting it. We're going to start by adding just a little bit of yellow here at the base. A little bit of probably manganese blue. That gives us the brightest glow. So I'll just put a little bit of the manganese on there. Manganese, boy, it doesn't move at all, so I have to get in here and encourage it. It's, it's amazing. Of all the colors that move and don't move, manganese wins. It doesn't move. <laughs> you can put it in a really wet surface and it won't move. We'll add just a little bit more. Smooth it out. Then we're going to start with the pink, just like we have all along, and kind of circle it in here. And then we're going to take our French ultramarine blue and circle it in here, let it blend. Now 
Now we are against a light background, so we have to put a little bit of dark over on this side. So we'll just pick up the circle. And then we can get even darker on this, on one of the sides. I'll pick this side. So because we're against a light background, we're going to push this into a fairly dark. Yeah, that looks great. Again, these colors don't blend that well, so I frequently just take a slightly damp brush and just kind of blend them a little bit. our last flower. Now this one we're just we always wet when we have a big shape like this. We always wet it because we want to keep that nice soft look. So we're going to come around here, wet it first. We're against a light background. So we're going to go dark where we're against the light background. We're going to go dark over here where we're against the petal in the foreground. And we're going to go light where we're against these two petals underneath. That's a lot to keep in mind, but you can do it. <laughs> okay, now we're ready to come in with our French ultramarine blue. Same thing, put it right over this red. You can skip a little spot every now and then, you'll get a nice glow. So sometimes I'm not real careful about getting every inch of it. I like that glow you get. Now it's going to be quite dark out here against this outer edge because it's against a light background. Really dark. It's going to be really dark under here. Ooh, now I'm going to switch to my flat brush. Wet it. Wipe it dry. And now I'm going to be making sure these edges are soft. See how the edges are just coming down and melting into that lovely white throat with just a hint of yellow. And then there's going to be a white shape coming up to this. And there'll be another white shape coming around here. and another white shape coming around here. Ha! Oh, oh, that looks great. How fun is that? Now, we do have this white against light here. I could add just a little bit more color. So I'm going to come up with the yellow, and I'm going to come up with some of my Antwerp some of these mid-tone colors here. Because at the base of this white throat, you actually see the color. I'm going to get a little darker. Okay, and then we're just going to melt this into now you can see it a little better. Great. Now as soon as that's dry, I'll do that final turn, and I'm going to do it dark at the top and light where it's against the petal. I'm going to go ahead and paint these buds. This is exciting. You know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to wet the bud, and I think I'll do both at once. And I'm going to start with 
again the yellow because they always have that little bit of yellow coming up from the base. And over here. So it's nice to see those, those brighter yellows popping up in here. Then I'm going to do the blue, or I'm sorry, then I'm going to do the red. And I'm thinking about the twisting motion. Twisting, twisting. Now we're going to add the French ultramarine blue. Now on this one, we don't have to worry about that lighter edge. We like that lighter edge because it's against the darker background. So that's basically all there is. I'm coming in now with just a slightly damp brush and I'm just going to soften some of these edges. I really like this light edge. I might even emphasize it a little more. Same here. I'm going to soften a few of these edges. and lift out a better edge here. Oh yeah. Nice. And we can, as long as we're in this maze here, we can just take a few minutes to add some of the brighter yellows. So this is a combination of Antwerp blue and just Windsor yellow. And I'm just going to make some, some lovely greens here. Just because we need some light colors. Kind of yellowy colors. Oh yeah. So you can see this is the lightest yellow. And I, I'm going to try to brighten up a few of these colors. And over here, this will be nice with that brighter yellow. But I need to go just a little bit darker behind this guy. So I'm not going to do much, but I'm going to just pull out a little bit of green. They're very close to a yellow, but I'm just putting a slight amount, just a slight amount of Antwerp in there, just to get that green tone. Now here you can start with the darker, that's my mid-tone, that's right on my palette here, and I'm going to quick lose that edge, and then just come in with yellow because I basically want this petal to be quite light. See it's on top of this petal. Yes. So everything's under or on top and we're just trying to make sense out of it. I have one leaf here that has more detail than the rest of the picture. You can see where I've actually come in and added some of the detail. And the interesting thing is, it's all surrounded by dark. So of course I want that leaf to light, to be light. But here's a cool little trick. If you want to, you can just leave, you can actually draw a double line like this. It's one of my favorite tricks. And so I do this double line. And then I actually come in First of all, with my lightest light, which is going to be like Windsor yellow. And I just paint it between 
these double lines. So now the only thing wet is where I've painted the yellow. Now I'm going to come in with some Antwerp blue and touch that just in the center, not pulling it all the way out to the edge, just in the center of the leaf. Now I'm going to take, shake out my brush, take most of the moisture off of this, and then just kind of draw this into a lost edge so that this whole leaf reads as a light color, but at the same time, it has this little bit darker in the center. In fact, I might even come in with a little bit more dark right in the center. This looks nice. So, so many of the leaves are just a shape. So it's always nice to give the viewer a little detail on one of these. And that's what we're going to do. Soften that edge again. So you can see how it reads as a light leaf, but it's against a dark background. Now because it's against a light throated area here, I'm going to actually come in and go just a little bit darker here. So this dark against light, light against dark, it's, it's something you should think about in every painting. Every, every one of these is a little victory. Much better. And see, you still can't tell. It reads as a light, but over here, now it's popping out that throat. Here too, there's another leaf here. So just with just by putting a little bit of dark next to this and then coming in with just a hint of a soft edge, now it's reading dark against the light. While this is still wet, I'm going to take a little piece of, um, this is my woodless watercolor pencil. And I'm just going to color sand just a little bit of this into this. Just to pick up, just to echo some of those warm colors. I might even get a little pinker here. Yes, much better. And it's only going to stick where I have it. It's only going to stick on here because the rest of the piece is dry. And sometimes I'll even activate these just a little bit. Just to pull in that nice warm feel. Isn't that great? You, it's a little, it's just a little touch. But see, a lot of these leaves are going to need a little hint of the pink. And you can either paint it on See? Painting that pink on there. Or you can do what I just did and color sand it. But yet it has to be wet when you do the color sanding. So really adding these pink tones, big, big deal, really big deal. And if you'll notice, when you look at these stems, they're full of little dots of red. And then some of these really dark stems, if you look carefully, they're actually pink or a deep, deep red. So I, I really get carried away with this at the end. I come in and I deepen a lot of these stems a lot because it just it just helps to complete the painting. It gives it that nice color unity. You don't feel like it's just a little spot of red. You feel like the whole picture, you've thought about it. OK, 
Okay, now we're ready for the really exciting part, and that is this last bit of really strong, dark negatives. This lesson is basically about how to paint negatively. Now I still have another bud and another leaf, but you know how I'm going to do those. So this is, this is going to be a wonderful last ending. If you'll recall, we took a mixture of quinacridone burnt orange. There it is right there. And we mixed in Antwerp blue. Antwerp has a lot of yellow in it. So when you mix it with the complement, you really do get a beautiful dark, dark green. I love this color. So there's our dark. And now the fun, the fun is just starting. Wow. If we want to, we can still add more leaves. So this is when I start looking around. They're lovely. They're little heart-shaped leaves. And I go, ooh, wouldn't that look nice to have a little twisty, turny one come up here? And maybe, yeah, let's do it. Let's pull one up here. And we'll add, I'm looking, I'm looking at this one right here. So I'm just going to add, it's got a little turn to it. It's actually a pretty cool leaf. And then it turns right here. So, oops, now the stem has to come out here. <laughs> That's what erasers are for. So I never worry about that. We'll just get in here. Gone. Okay, so now we've added a leaf here. And you can see the twisty turny. Oh, there's no end to that. So I'm thinking we might have to do another twisty turny. And of course, some of these will definitely get darker where they're out here. And this, this leaf, we're not going to, um, it's in an outside area, so it needs to be dark. This part here can be quite dark. You can see what's happening already. When this dries, I'm going to come in and paint this with uh, just dark at the bottom but light at the top. So now it's going to be fun. I can just kind of wiggle around here, add some dark shapes. And now it's time to think about some of the really, really dark shapes, like in here. Wouldn't this be lovely? Just a little darker. And as we come around here, it can just sort of turn magically into a leaf or something like that. I'll show you what I mean. First of all, I have to make sure the color is bookended in all directions. So you can see the dark. Now I'm going to take, shake out my brush, take out the extra moisture, and go ahead and bookend some of these edges. And then I'm just going to take this lovely dark and start a little pattern moving through, maybe going off the bottom. Maybe there'll be another leaf shape here. And see, if you're not, if you're feeling uncomfortable just making this up, go ahead and take a pencil and draw it in. I frequently have to do that. So now we've got an extra dark here and we have a little leaf shape here attached to this. I think it would be nice to go a little extra dark in here too. So anywhere you feel you want to clean up edges or pop it out a little darker, just take your mixture and go for it. I do like that extra dark. 
And then you have two choices. You can turn that extra dark into a shape, or you can just come in and lose the edges and you're done. Just don't forget to bookend it. Now I didn't mix enough, so I gotta get I gotta get some more another dark. Well, we're getting close to done. I'm very excited. I think it wouldn't hurt to do, maybe pick up this little twisty turny, bring it in. And they go around and around. You can go anywhere you want to with this. Oh, that was fun. And these guys, see, they're going to come in here and come out down here somewhere. So you can just go, like I say, as far as you want with this twisty turny stuff. Now I see a leaf here that has a foreground petal and in front of a background petal. So what I need to do here is just to take a little bit of a darker value. We'll move in a little closer so you can see it. So I'm just going to take my mid-tone value here follow that foreground shape <laughs> wet my brush shake it out touch it on my little sock here and always start on the outside and work back so you're just getting a nice lost edge and if you're doing this and you're having some problems See, mine didn't work out that well. I could add a little more color. And then if, you're, if your edge isn't working out as well as you'd like, don't forget the salt trick. Just while it's still wet, just come in and put a little salt. And actually a little polka dotty shape on there will be good. Now you can see we have a few shapes going in front of another petal. So I'm, I want you to look around your piece and see, did I get them all? And so this one's going to be dark against light, lose the edge, come in with some yellow, and it'll turn into yellow here against the rest of it. So have fun with all your reversals. So have fun with your reversals, and I'll look forward to seeing you again. are all non-staining colors. So for example, if you have something like this, you can just take a stiff brush and just move it around and kind of clean up any areas that you feel are a little bit jarring. Over here I have a pencil mark. I could just make that, I think what I'll do is just take and make that into a leaf shape, kind of twisting around. But if I wanted to, I could remove that just with my flat brush, dabbing it with a tissue. Make sure your water is clean when you're doing this. So the very last thing I do is a lot of fussing around like this. Checking my edges, making sure I've got contrast, and cleaning up any little dings.